know, you, as a striker, when you get to a new club, you, you biggest thing you want to kind of get amongst the goals as soon as possible. Um, I've managed to, to do that. Um, team started relatively well. Um, disappointed ourselves in a few results, but all in all, I think um, if you reflect on the start, it's been been a, been a good one. A new change of room as well. Um, you're quite an experienced player now. You just describe yourself off camera as the elder statesman of the of the dressing room. How does this changing room rank in in terms of the ones you've experienced in your career? Is there a good chemistry there? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a good good group of lads. Like I said, it's I'm now the old, eldest player, but. Um, I've take, come in and the boys have made me feel really welcome. You can tell there's like a good camaraderie amongst them. There's a great team spirit and um, a few, few jokers in, in the bunch in terms of um, keeping everyone happy and keeping everyone uh, kind of buzzing along, I suppose. But yeah, my role's a little bit different, but um, I think mine's just to kind of pass on my experience to them and, and I'm enjoying doing that. Yeah, did you still get nervous when, you, when you're heading to a new changing room? Obviously, you've been to a few clubs now. What, what's that feeling like when you, when you first get there? Oh, 100 percent you get nervous. It's um it's that it's just the feeling of unknown, isn't it? Of from I think you, you get used to obviously a dressing room, um, how things work at a certain club and then it's obviously going and, and, and the change. So I guess it's just a change really. That's the um, it's the unknown the change. But um like I said the boys here were, were brilliant, really welcome me in. Um and after a day or two it's like your nerves are settled and you, you just kind of get down to, to, to work. Did you have a, an initiation song as well when you first came in and, and could you reveal that to us? I did, yeah. We had a, I think it was one of our first away games. I can't remember who it was, but uh, there was a, quite a few, quite a few new lads. So initiation, and I went for a um, Sean Paul temperature. Um, I think it, I think it went down quite well. To be honest, I got a good reception. So uh, yeah, I was happy with that one. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to ask you to give us a few beats of that now. I'll, I'll save you the blushes. Um, <laughs> uh, five goals so far this season. That suggests you're doing something right. Is goals what you judge yourself by as a striker or, or is it how you play within the team? Obviously, as a striker, I think that is your bread and butter is goals and you'll always look at um, goals and kind of be disappointed if you're not getting amongst the goals. But I do think I do bring a bit more than that to, to, team, um, to the team um, in terms of the focal point and um, occupying defenders and allowing other players to kind of get in, get in, get involved um, higher up the pitch. So, um, yeah, I don't judge myself just on goals, but um, listen, it's goals win games. So, you know, if you're contributing and, and, um, with the goals and, and we're getting points on the board, then that's all, all, always a pleasing thing. And the manager's well-renowned for, for playing that attractive football as well, that style. Is that something that attracted you to, to come to the club as well, to, to be involved in that? Yeah, it was something obviously I was aware of, um, obviously playing against his teams in the past. Um, and kind of looking into how I would fit into that because sometimes you, you can you play against teams and you can see the way they play and like you said you can picture yourself in that team and it's kind of um, I think it's a little bit different how what the type of strike I am is probably different to what the club had last season um, so I think you could it's something that I think um, I looked at myself well I can fit into that kind of team so um, the manager obviously like when he, when he mentioned when he spoke to me originally um, it was key for me to come, so that was something that you know played on my mind and, and made the decision quite easy. Yeah, and obviously things you know still quite strange at the minute. No fans in the stadium. Uh, just on a general point, how, how much does football need fans back and, and, and the crowds there for, for clubs like like yourself? Listen, it's it's massive. Um, listen, I've been to a new club. We we had um, I think we were one of the clubs chosen for a test test event um, just before. Um, things went a little bit south again. Um, so we had some fans in for, I think it was a game against Bradford. Um, but obviously it wasn't the same amount and there weren't there were rules in place where they weren't allowed to kind of cheer and such, such kind of thing. So it was um, strange, but like I said, listen, I've been to a new club and not really had a proper chance to kind of have that feeling of the fans um, in the ground, especially. And kind of when you score as well, I think that's the biggest thing for, for me. Um, I think when you score sometimes and you think, oh, you celebrate, it's like, well, normally you kind of go towards the fans because that's the kind of passion that they've got and uh, that raw emotion from you when you score you think go towards the fans because you're both sharing that passion there and I think that's that's massively a part of, of it I'm missing um, but just to have them them around and um, to, keep, to keep you going in games because um, I think it's, it's um, they play a massive part with that and hopefully um, we can see them back soon Yeah I was going to mention the, the fact that the goal celebrations was the hat trick. I imagine the weirdest one, where you you know you take home the match ball and there's no one there there to clap at the end of the game. What what was that like for you? Yeah, it was really strange. Like I said, um, 
got the first one, it was kind of, it was equal. So we, we would just kind of get back into play and you get, like I said, get second and third. And it's, it's. Um, I remember saying to a few of the boys, I'll oh, come over here and let's turn it over here. Cause it was like, what, where, where do you go kind of thing? And um, yeah, it was obviously a, a, an occasion that I really enjoyed, but it, like I said, it would have been made a lot better if, if there were fans in there to, to um, celebrate with me, definitely. In a weird way, though, we've seen with some maybe younger players who haven't, um, who've made the debuts during this period, who've flourished, um, the likes of Louis Sibley for, for Derby County, for example, is the fact that the fans aren't there and not having not having the pressure of playing in front of that of that crowd um, when you're in front of goal and you know you know you, get, you know that pressure of, of the expectation is that something that can help players or. I'm, I'm guessing from the sounds of what you're saying, it's something that you thrive on. Yeah, I think I think the pressures of when you're in front of goal, I think that's still there because in the day, if you, you, you're trying to score goals to, to win games, and same at the other end, players are trying to keep goals out exactly, um, for, to, to win as well. So I think that pressure's still there. But um, I know what you mean. I think sometimes if it, probably the pressure's off for, for example, a younger player because if you make a mistake, there's not that maybe that noise of, of, of uh, discontent from, from the fans which can sometimes put a bit of pressure on you um, so I think yeah I think that possibly is an upside from it and you've you got to look take a rough with the smooth and that's probably a positive um, I think if you look at the, the bigger picture obviously the, um, positive, uh, the negatives of not having fans in obviously outweighs the, the positives yeah massively I, I mean you, you've touched on young, the young players there you touched on at the start as well being brought in to sort of help those younger players how, how is that going for, for you and is that a career path for you going forward, you see yourself being involved in, you know, coaching, um, especially younger players, and, and getting them through into the first team. Yeah, it's, it's a possibility. It's something I won't rule out. I just um, recently completed the UA for B license, um, so I've that come through the past couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, that's it's something I have looked into. Um, but like I said, the, the boys here, listen, there's a lot of young players in, very good young players here, and I think sometimes it's as a young player, you you. You've got that all that enthusiasm um, and all the ability in the world, but you just need to know when to do certain things in games and how to manage think, manage games, etc. And not just myself. I think there's a few boys um, in the team: um, Scotty Wagstaff, um, Chris Stokes, um, Elliot Whitehouse, Dan Sweet. There's a few boys along the spine, Carl and Jester Skipper, who are um, along the spine of the team, and Jordy Moore Taylor. I've, I've missed out as well. So boys that are, have been there and played, uh, um, got good experience. So. Um, I think it's our job collectively and, and, and along with myself as experienced players to kind of pass on our knowledge to to um, to the younger players and get them to, to kind of manage games and tell them when to do things in games, etc. When to take probably more of a risk and those kinds of things. So, yeah, it's um, it's something I'm definitely enjoying. And, and um, yeah, the more I do do um, play and, and, and I'm here with the boys, it's something I, I definitely do think about. You mentioned uh, you know going in, in, into coaching there um, yourself and, and, and doing your badges. Um, is, is that something, you know, we, we look at the, at the minute, the, the sort of lack of, of black managers in, in the game um, across the EFL and across the Premier League and across you know, football in general, it's something that there's a real shortage of. Is that something that, you know, you... you you know, strive to sort of what want to to see change in is, is that an area where you know you see yourself pushing and, and being um you know like a, a trailblazer if you like yeah listen it's um we talk about the lack of of see that managers and, and um managers from different backgrounds and it is something that needs to change it's something that for whatever reason hasn't been um as common as 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 it needs to be um when I get, I'm, I'm quite focused obviously at the minute as as still a player. So um, in a couple of years' time, if I do choose to go down that path, then it's obviously something that that I'll do um, based on merit if I think it's right. Um, but I don't think it will affect my decision based on whether there's a lack of um, coaches, uh, black coaches, or, or or not. I think it'll just be on a on a, a merit basis, basically on whether I want to do it or not. But um, it's it, listen if it takes myself and a few other players now going right we need to step up and, and um, break down break down those barriers then it's something that needs to happen because like I said if you look at the percentage of black players and players from different backgrounds um, who play it play football the the numbers of um, coaches and managers aren't representative of, of those players so that's something that I think needs to, to change hopefully we can see some more change in that in the next few years uh, focusing back on, on the football though as well uh, the, the games are coming thick and fast this season, more than, than ever before um, in, su- in such a short space of time. 
how difficult is it to, to stay sharp at, at the minute knowing you've got that, that amount of games in such a short period? Yeah, it's, it is quite difficult um, and I think that's where I think the professional level players has to, to come into play because you've got to kind of focus on the game that's there ahead of you. Um, so you play that game to the best of your ability. Um, you know you've got a game coming in a couple of days but you can't really think about that. You've got to play that game ahead of you and then that's when the recovery process comes into it. Um, and I think that's what we've got to do as much as we can as players to obviously recover as quickly as possible. Um, we, can't, we can't affect the fixture list so we can only affect what we, we can and that's looking after ourselves as, as good as possible and, and um, I think the teams and the players that do that will obviously um, achieve better success. At this stage in your career as well, sort of like, I'd say probably the end of the prime of your career maybe, is it fair to say? What, what would it mean to you to see this, still in the prime, still in the absolute prime, <laughs> what, what would it mean though to see this club promoted and, and to play a part in a promotion campaign again? Obviously the club have been you know so close over recent seasons to achieving that. Yeah. Uh, listen, that's that's part of the reason I signed here. I'm an ambitious player. Um, the manager is ambitious. Um, all the players in the dressing room are ambitious, and that's our that's obviously ultimately our aim. I think as a footballer, you've got to be ambitious and and want to be your teams that are successful. Um, and like I said, they, the club have been close recently, so um, hopefully we can get over the line this year. Um, but listen, we've got to take each game as it comes. The old, the old cliche. I'm still in the prime of my career, so <laughs> so um, hopefully I can add, add, to, add to that and. Um, yeah, I think we've got we've got um, some talented players here and a talented team. So, um, come the end of the season, we we hopefully will be there or thereabouts. Absolutely, in your prime. Um, and and finally, what what are your targets personally as well for the season? Did you set a target for for goals, or is it just like I mentioned earlier, just about playing well in the team? Yeah, I think um, I think goal setting and target setting is quite important. Um, I found that in the last couple of years and I always try to set targets. You don't always hit them, but you've, if you've not got nothing to aim for, then you can um, rest in your laurels, laurels a bit. So um, for myself, I try to listen. I always try to aim for double figures as quickly as possible. Um, and like I said, ideally, I'd like to get that before Christmas. Uh, might, might, you know, might regret saying that now out loud, but listen, that's, I think you've got to kind of set these targets. So that's normally what my aim, um, try and get to double figures before Christmas if possible and then try and kick on from there. Um, so yeah, that's that's my target, and listen, if I achieve that, achieve that with the boys that are obviously scoring alongside myself, then, and like I said, we'll be there or thereabouts. Plenty of games to achieve that target as well before Christmas. Jamil, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers, pleasure talking to you too. Take care.